So movement itself is such a vital component of the human experience that in order to understand how to get out of pain, we actually need to hack our movements. And one of the reasons why we say that is if we take an example of, um, of babies and as they mature and they have that red book, before we can ever figure out how they're doing cognitively and intellectually, they have development milestones. So in the red book, we have to see that they're able to hold their head up um, by a certain age, maybe two, uh, two to four weeks, and they're able to um, sit up by themselves maybe three to six months, and they're able to crawl at six months, and they're able to perhaps stand by nine to 10, 9 to 12 months or and certainly by 18 months they should be walking and again we would expect them to be dry by day perhaps by two years maybe three years and certainly dry by night by four four years and the reason why these are things are set in stone is because there are certain maturations of movement that happen in the brain that let us know that actually the brain is developing in, in an appropriate way. And the same thing can be said in terms of getting out of pain because the brain has to process all of the information that the nervous system is providing and determine whether things are actually safe or not. And so very often in the cl clinic, what we find is because movement is so integrated into the way that we think, because our movement areas of our brain actually matured before our thinking bits of the brain, as evidenced by the gray book and the milestones that we need to, to meet as a baby, Sometimes with patients, when we show them a movement, they don't under, you don't understand it intellectually and you don't understand it in terms of how to do it. So we'll show a patient a movement and they'll look at that and they'll be like, I don't understand that. I don't understand it intellectually and I don't understand actually what you're showing me. And the really interesting thing is sometimes if you show them on the right leg how to do a movement and they won't understand it at all. And then you ask them to do it on the left leg and they can do it immediately with no further uh, explanation needed. And the reason for that, and very interestingly, is that because movement and language are integrated so completely, what you'll find is that on one leg, if you've lost the ability to do the movement because you've been in chronic pain, you actually intellectually don't understand it either. Whereas on the right leg, or the left leg, forgive me, maybe you've had no pain there at all, immediately you understand the movement and you can apply the language uh, in the same way. So what you'll be discovering in the movement series that will follow is that sometimes we'll be asking you to do a movement that seems very clumsy, uh, not familiar to you and you don't actually understand what we're asking. Sometimes what we say to you is actually do the movement on the good side of the body and you'll develop an awareness and of understanding and then you can reverse engineer that onto the other side of the body. I love the statement in, in French of rock climbers because what they tend to say is if you have a problem, a rock climbing uh, task that uh, you can't do, what the French say is not that you're not good enough and that you can't do it, it's just your, your body doesn't understand it yet. And that's very, very true with movement, is as we develop chronic pain, we lose an understanding and awareness in our body of actually how to do it. And so not only do we lack the physical ability to do it, but because in our brain the language centres and the movement centres are integrated, we actually lose a cognitive ability to understand the task at hand as well. So what we need to do in terms of rehabilitating you is actually to put that awareness back into the body such that eventually you can move into these spaces and your brain and your nervous system actually can feel that it's safe to do so.